Hey folks, it's Ben Capozzi with the Main Street Gardener. It's uh, January 9th and almost 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. And I just got back over uh, the weekend from a fantastic um, pruning and orchard restoration workshop with Eliza Greenman. Uh, you should definitely look into her work if you're interested in apples and uh, clean uh, growing of uh, fruit and orcharding. Um, she's really fascinating. Um, uh, person doing some really impressive work with that but um, so I'm back home now it's about 24 degrees right now and the temperature is falling um, it's a balmy 60 degrees inside our house we um we heat with wood which is efficient but our house is old and it is inefficient so it's pretty cold inside but um, I still managed to come out today and take a look around and see what's going on uh, with the orchard and my trees um, while I was gone we got about eight inches of snow which is quite unusual for uh, South Boston and um, so I was out checking out uh, my trees here in the yard and <clears throat> I noticed that um, one of my uh, uh, little apple trees, uh, my Anna apple tree, uh, had broken off on one of the main branches. It's still quite small. But um, I was going to take scion wood from that tree uh, later this uh, month or in February. And um, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip that off and accelerate that right now. And um, then I'll go inside and get it all set up. So I'll show you how um, I collect and um, hold on to my scion wood for grafting later on in the season. So right here is my little Anna apple tree and you can see that the break is right there. Um, lots of our trees um, had some uh, bending and damage and stuff and uh, it was kind of a heavy snow. You can see that uh, our rosemary right there all split open. It didn't break though, it just bent down. It's bending back up and it's going to be like in the upper 50s, maybe even close to 60 later this week. So uh, I'm not super worried about these things, but I need to go ahead and take this branch here. So I'm going to cut it, I'm trying to cut it back a little bit so that it's clean, but I still preserve that little bud under there. Um, I don't know if it'll come back from that or not, but anyhow, this is a perfectly good stick of um, first year growth up to that point right there. That's two year old growth from here on, but I can use both of them um, to graft some new Anna apple trees later this year. So let's take these inside and get them cleaned up. All right, so I'm just gonna show you real quick um, what I'm working with and how I clean up this uh, piece of the uh, Anna uh, apple tree that I broke off. I've actually got four different varieties here that I brought back with me from uh, the orcharding, uh, an orchard pruning and orchard restoration workshop with Eliza Greenman a couple days ago. And um, so in addition to my own uh, piece of Anna scion here that uh, I got outside that you saw from my own damaged tree. I brought back um, a great long piece of Porter's Perfection, which is an English cider variety. And I brought back two very vigorous, very vigorous. This is all first year growth. Like, this is insane. Um, and I learned that very vigorous growth like this is quite common um, for old Southern heritage varieties. Um, so this is Harrison, which is actually um, an American cider variety that originated uh, in the 19th century. It was huge, it came out of Newark, New Jersey, and it was one of the premier cider making apples. Um, and then around the dawn of the 20th century, it fell out of favor um, with prohibition. Uh, in the temperance movement and uh, it was thought extinct for most of the 20th century and it wasn't rediscovered until 1976 uh, and then uh, they had to graft the wood and grow the apples so it didn't bear for another like decade so it wasn't until the mid 80s that we had confirmation that Harrison was back so I'm really pleased to have this to add to our orchard and then this uh, these are some uh, branches that were pruned off of a very tasty crab apple tree, um, an unnamed variety um, on a farm where our workshop happened. It was actually outside um, uh, the farmer's really, really swank um, gentleman's retreat. Um, so Eliza, uh, when I asked her what the name of this one was, she said, well, let's call it Man Cave. Um, so uh, later on I thought about it and I told her, I'm going to rename this cultivar in my orchard. I'm going to call it Lascaux after the um, famous art history um, cave painting place. But anyhow, so we've got Anna, Porter's Perfection, Lascaux, and Harrison. 
So all I'm going to do at this point, because I'm not grafting anything now, it's January, so you can't do any grafting, but what I do want to do is just clean these up a bit. Some of these um, were taken from uh, prunings, and in order to fit them in my car, I would like bend or break them, so these are pretty ragged. So all I'm going to do today is clean these up with my pruners, uh, my secateurs, if you're English. Um, I'm going to clean these ends up, and I'm going to then dip those open ends in the wax here so that it will seal almost immediately. That'll keep the moisture in so that my scion doesn't dry out. Drying out is a big problem. Then I will wrap the scions in cellophane uh, or you know saran wrap. Uh, I'll make sure the label is on them. Then they'll go inside this bag right here with a damp towel. Uh, and then they'll go in the crisper drawer in my fridge where they'll hang out for the next 30 days or so, 30 to 60 days until I can finish, um, take them out and actually graft them on the root stocks in February or March. So I'm gonna do right here is just clean this ragged end up. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna cut just below um, a bud. Uh, so that doesn't really matter, but there's a nice clean end. Let me get this going. So I'll let that wax get nice and hot and melt up a bit. And then I'll dip this in there. And you know, this is obviously way more than you want. In fact, this is uh, two year old wood here. And then you can see the um, bud scale scar right here. So all of this is last year's growth. This one year growth is what's easiest to graft. Um, this two year stuff is still graftable. I've heard that uh, the success rate is a little um, lower, but I can still work with that. So, um, in order to fit this into my refrigerator, I'm going to have to trim it um, a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and peel these leaves off. It is neat to note that this Anna apple variety held its leaves until mid-January, um, which is crazy. But um, my bud leaf, uh, my uh, bud scar is here, so I'm going to come up to... Well, that's a pretty big bag, actually. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right here. At the, uh, at the two year mark. And then once my wax is heated up, I'll dip both of those in there and, uh, and seal both ends off, both the top and the bottom. <clears throat> With my Poda's Perfection here, uh, again, I just need to be able to fit it for the time being into that bag, so I'm gonna cut it About here at the same same point on um, the mark the demarcation between the first year and the second year and I think that should fit in the bag if not I might have to do a little extra trimming um, these I can cut these pretty aggressively clean up the ends and then cut it in half now, depending on the grafting technique you use when you're grafting these onto your rootstock or whatever, um, you don't need a whole lot of buds. I mean, a long stick would be four or five buds. Um, some folks just do two buds or three buds at most. Um, and then some folks, if you're just going to do bud grafting, which is done in late summer, like in August, you only need like one bud. So, you know, the potential to make a bunch of trees out of these few pieces um, is high, it's significant. So that's kind of cool. And I'm excited to uh, add Lasco to uh, my orchard. This one's got some damage up here where I took it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Just so I remember to dip all ends of this into this wax, because the, the wax is a trick I learned from Larry Stevens. Uh, previously, I learned from Larry Stevens to use um, Elmer's wood glue, and um, which is just fine. But uh, Larry suggested the other day that uh, now he uses wax, and that's what I'm going to use because he said it dries so much faster, and um, it really just kind of like instant, instantaneously almost. Cut this down below the damage where I bent it, and cut this. So, you know, there's like five buds on that stick, four, six on this. Anyhow, it's plenty, plenty to work with. And then Harrison here, so vigorous. 
which is cool. Um, I didn't really know that. I learned a lot at that workshop. If you ever have a chance and you're in the southern, uh, where you're in Maryland or Northern Virginia or uh, anywhere thereabouts near Frederick, Maryland, and you get a chance to go and do uh, anything with Eliza Greenman, I uh, highly recommend it. She's just, she's um, amazing and enthusiastic and super knowledgeable and um, just, a, just a real treasure for the fruit exploring community. So um, if you ever have a chance, go and see her, work with her, learn from her. All right, so I cleaned up the uh, rough, rough bits. <coughs> now let me just cut it into more reasonable lengths here. When I'm cutting these, it's not just um, willy-nilly. What I'm doing is I'm cutting just above uh, a bud here. The next bud is up here. So I'm making my cut here so that when I come in to graft this, I've got plenty of room to make my grafting cuts here on the bottom of this one. So when I'm cutting one, I'm thinking about, when I'm cutting the top of one, I'm thinking about the bottom of the one above it and where it will be. And now this, this is, there's I think a dozen buds or so here just looking at this. I can still get two, three, maybe four additional trees propagated from this stick right here. So that's all Harrison, which is great. All right, my wax is kind of melty. So let's see if it's melty enough. Boom. And it's sealed. Boom. And it's sealed. Yeah, maybe get a little bit more there. Get it nice and thick. And that's all there is to it. That's pretty cool. Um, so like I said, I'm just going to bag these up. Um, I'll wrap them in cellophane. I will label them. I will put them in a big Ziploc bag that's like a gallon bag or whatever. Um, with a moist towelette, not damp, not soaking. You don't want to promote um, mold or anything like that. And then they're gonna go in the crisper drawer and they'll hang out in there for two, three, four, five months. I'm not freezing them, just keeping them cool. That'll keep them dormant. Sealing them on both ends will keep all the moisture in and they'll be ready to rock when I'm ready to graft in like late February, March, or even April. So I hope this is helpful. Um, learning to graft is very, very useful. Um, it makes purchasing trees and growing trees a lot less expensive and honestly a lot more fun. Like it's pretty neat to go outside and see trees that I myself grafted um, or that my wife grafted that we as a family did. And we're doing a lot of this to get our orchard set up out in Sutherland. If you're interested in this and other stuff, please follow me uh, on Instagram or Twitter or check out our um, farm page on Facebook at Elmwood Farm Tree Crops. And of course, you can also find me at themainstreetgardener.com. Have a great day.